Hello and welcome to Japanese from Zero. I'm George Trombley and this is Kanji from Zero. We are now continuing down the lessons. We're now in lesson four out of the 39 lessons of this book. There's actually 39, but we only learned about four to five kanji or six kanji max, I think, uh, per lesson. So it's not too bad. Uh, and today's kind of overlying theme that we have is, is every kanji a picture? Because this is the, I would say the common thought when you start learning kanji that kanji are pictographs and yes they are and yes they might have originated from many of them originated from we'll find out that not every kanji will connect in your brain as a picture and maybe they did when they first were uh, invented or created but they certainly most of the time i would say don't nowadays all right so let's go through we're gonna learn some kanji this is the first one this is chinese uh, japanese reading yasu yasu and remember we have these parentheses to show what it's typically paired with. So, yasumu, yasumu, okay? And the Chinese reading, or the onyomi, is kyu, kyu. And uh, not that I think it's super important, uh, but it is six strokes, rokkaku. Uh, if you don't know how to read a kanji, remember, you can just count the strokes and go to the back of any kanji dictionary and look for all of the six strokers and you'll find it. Or if you knew the radical, you could look it up by radical. Now, at this point, we really don't know radicals, but uh, I'll kind of teach you one today. We'll, we'll, we'll learn one today. All right. All right, let's look at some words that use this kanji. Yasumi. Yasumi. Yasumi means all three of these things. It means a break, like a five minute break. Okay. It can mean an entire day off. It can mean a holiday. Ima yasumi desu. I am on holiday right now, okay? It doesn't mean like a national holiday. We're going to get to that in a second. It's just like, I think in uh, England you say, I'm on holiday right now. And I think that means like, I'm I'm off of work right now. You can correct me in the, uh, correct me in the comments. Okay? Uh, for example, we can say, hiru yasumi. Hiru yasumi means just lunch break. You can put any of the um, seasons in front of yasumi. Natsu yasumi is summer break. Fuyu yasumi, winter break, okay? Haru yasumi, spring break, okay? You know, you know, surprisingly enough, I don't think there's an aki yasumi. I've never heard that. Aki yasumi doesn't exist, as far as I know. Then you've got this word, QK, QK. QK just really means a break. Now, typically, QK is more of a short, like, I'm just gonna take a break, like a QK, all right? You might hear, like, QK chu desu, QK chu. I'm on a break right now. QK to this. All right. Then we've got Kyujitsu. Now, Kyujitsu is written with to rest, yasumu, right? Yasumi. And day, a day of rest. Okay. You might also hear Yasumi no hi. Yasumi no hi means day of break. And Kyujitsu is just the Chinese version, the Chinese reading version of it. It means the same thing. It just means a day off. Okay. Uh, but let's look at the difference between a national holiday and just an actual day off, okay? It's shukujitsu. Shukujitsu, we don't know this kanji right here, but that's the kanji to celebrate. So shukujitsu is a day of celebration, okay? And it means actual, like a national holiday, like um, kanshasai, you know, the, the Japanese version of Thanksgiving, or uh, oshogatsu, or golden week, golden week and New Year's. Those are official days where the Japanese people take off. All right, next kanji. This is the kanji, it means up, okay? Now, what what part of this makes you think up? You know, we're talking about uh, the overall topic here is what makes that look like up? Well, maybe because this line and there's a, a line going up. I think that's a fairly good. I don't know what that does to us, right? I don't know if that helps, this line, the second stroke, but it's kind of pointing up, right? It's an upside down T, right? But it, it could mean up, maybe. It would be better if it looked like an arrow. I mean, maybe you can connect this and then, but the problem is, the problem with making that mnemonic is that if you have a line extending here, it now means soil. See the problem? Soil doesn't look like soil. It's just this with another, with a connected line across. And that's tsuchi or do for doyobi, right? For uh, Saturday. So I think that's one of the problems with straight mnemonics, right? And this is why mnemonics really are a personal thing because you'll come up with something in your heart that makes sense, that only makes sense maybe to you. Now, there are some universal ones that work very well and a lot of books prey on that and they show you that 
And then I think we get tricked into thinking every kanji can do that, but not every kanji can do that. The more complicated the kanji gets, the less it, it's possible to do that. Unless you come up with some really crazy um, mnemonics on your own. Now, <clears throat> this kanji has a lot of readings. Ue, ua, kami, nobo, ru, a, geru, a, garu. Okay. A uh, lot of Japanese readings. Uh, kunyomi. And the onyomi, jo or sho. Jo or sho. All right. Now, I want to point something out because uh, I think some people often wonder this because I didn't know it when I started learning Chinese. I was like, man, am I going to have to learn a bunch of new readings for characters? But strangely enough, and it makes sense now that I think about it, most Chinese characters in China have one way to read it. So even though they use a lot more characters, there's like only one way, sometimes two. I'm learning that there's sometimes two, but it's not like, why would they have multiple ways to read it, right? Now you could maybe say, there's the Cantonese way to read it, right? And the uh, the Mandarin way to read it and the Wu way to read it. I think that's possible, but in Mandarin by itself, no. But Japanese has multiple ways because when China, when, when China introduced kanji, the Chinese characters, to Japan, Japan already had a language, and they were using words like noboru, ageru. And they said, oh, we don't have a writing system. We'll take your writing system that you're introducing to us, and we'll, we'll apply it to words that mean the same thing in our language. And that's how you get all of these different words that all mean something to do with up, right? And then they had, Chinese has jo or shou at the time. Uh, I think Wu Dynasty... Or I heard someone was saying the, I don't know how to say it, the Tsang Dynasty or the Tang Dynasty or something like that. It's, it's, it's not just one dynasty that brought kanji to Japan. It was, mul it was over many, many years that kanji got introduced. So a lot of times the kanji has multiple readings because of their own dialects, right? And then China sometimes had different ways to read it the same. Uh, in, over time, they learned multiple ways. And maybe different diplomats went to this part of Japan than went to this part of Japan because they weren't unified at that time as a country, right? I don't know all of the theory, but I know that that part of it is very logistically true. Uh, that's why there's so many readings. Korea also has multiple readings for when they used kanji, but China typically does not. So it's kind of interesting. So, all right, three strokes for this one. Ue, pointing up, all right? Look at uh, some words here. Now, we're going to, we're going to, this is a little bit of a Japanese lesson, okay? You're going to learn some verbs all using the same kanji. We've got ageru. Now, ageru is the physical act of raising. Mouse wo agemashita. I raised up the mouse, okay? Uh, maybe I raised the price. I phys. Hang on. My mouse just did something. I, I did something when I pressed it. It got very awkward for a minute. Um, I raised the price. Nedan o agemashita. Ageru, this is an active verb. It's something that I do. That's that's why you typically are going to, not typically, but that's why you have an object. Anything that has an object is typically an active verb. So I did it. Okay. But we have also, I'm not in the right thing anymore. We also have agaru. It's ageru, agaru. Now this one is more, uh, you don't do it. You're just talking about the situation. Okay. It's like a state verb. So, uh, agarimashita. Neidan ga agarimashita. The price went up. I didn't do it. Someone did it. It wasn't me. The most important part of what I'm saying is the price rose. Neidan ga agarimashita versus neidan o agemashita. I raised the price. Okay. Now it also means to go up. Like you could, you could, um, you could say, aga. It could mean go up, right? Table ni agarimashita. I got up on the table. But what is this come in? Why is it come in? Japanese will tell you to come inside, but they won't say, ie ni haitte kite kudasai. They'll most likely say, agatte kudasai. What does that mean? All Japanese houses have genkan, okay? The public space of their house where you go inside. And they are typically in a lower position in the house. That's where you take your shoes off. And you agaru up into the house. You take your shoes off and you go up into every house. So they'll say, agatte kudasai. You're learning some things, right? We're learning some things, all right? Another verb with the up kanji, noboru. This is used more like uh, climbing mountains or the, the kind of action where you're, you're, you're lifting your leg to get up onto it, right? You could, um, you could noboru, um, I think you could noboru onto the table, table ni noboranai de. 
Yeah, don't crawl up onto the table. Table ni agaranaide. Don't get up on the table. Okay. All right. All right. Then we've got. Remember this one because we're going to talk about the opposite one after this. Johin, johin. This is written with up, and th and uh, object thing thing. These three boxes is like a. It, it's like it's used in a lot of words involving products. And I think that this is a very good. We don't know this one yet, but three boxes looks like products stacked up, right? Like shohin. We don't know this one yet, but that means product, and it's using this hin. This kanji is always typically used with things. And this is an johin, although it has nothing to do with that really. It's an elegant quote unquote thing. But you could say about a person, you could say johin desu. She is very elegant, you could say, all right? All right, remember that because we're gonna do the opposite of it in a second. All right, here we go. Now here we go, we've got down. Now I want you to remember that up had a line down here and a line going up. So I think this is very good. This is actually pretty good. Uh, to easy to remember that one goes down and one goes up, but this line is not straight across. So you're not just flipping it upside down. This has a down slant to it, okay? All right, and this can be read Shita, Shimo, Moto, Sa, Kuda, and O in the Japanese readings. And the, and by the way, you, you shouldn't just blanket memorize the readings. You should learn words that use those readings. That's way more important and beneficial, okay? So we have got a ga and ge, a ka and ge, sorry, for um, for the Chinese readings, okay? Or the onyomi. All right, and this is three strokes. Now we're gonna do some similar words that we just did, but we're gonna do them for uh, lowering and, uh, instead of raising. So to lower something actively, I will lower it, sageru. For example, let's go back to lowering that price. Neidan o sagemasu. I will lower the price. What is this? Take away? What is that? When you're in a restaurant or in someone's house and you're eating something, they will sageru the things in front of you. They'll pull it away from you and put it somewhere else, okay? So you could say to the waitress, sagete kudasai. That doesn't mean get down low. It means please take away the the things from the table. Maybe you'll say it a little bit nicer. You'll be like, sagete itadakemasu ka? Can I have you take these away? And maybe when you're in someone's house and you're eating, they'll say, Sagemasu ne? I'll take this away now. I'll, I'll clean this up, right? So that's another, uh, we don't teach this in the book, but it's a, maybe I should do it in an update, but it's a pretty good cultural note. All right, then we've got Sagaru, which is the more of a passive thing, right? It lowers, right? So to lower. Neidan ga sagarimashita. The price dropped. Uh, then you've got to go down, Sagaru, right? Um, and back up, back up in a two-dimensional plane where you're not going up and down. I could say to you, sagatte kudasai, back it up, right? Back it up, sagatte kudasai. It just means move back in the two-dimensional plane. It also is the three-dimensional plane, all right? In English, we have to say, you know, go down, but back is a different word, but in Japanese, you can use both uh, with sagaru. All right, next one, kudasai. We all probably already know this. Now, a lot of times the Japanese won't write the kanji for kudasai. They'll just write it in hiragana, but it, this is where it comes from. Kudasai, when you're asking kudasai, you're asking for someone to give it to you from a high up position. They are higher than you because you're the one that needs it. So it's kudasai, give to me. Whereas ageru, to give to someone, you're giving it up to them. Agemas, I will give it to you. Does that make sense? When you know the culture, it's kind of fun. All right, and now we have gehin. Now, jogin is a person that is elegant and just, you know, elegant. They're they're refined, right? But gehin is what I am. I'm very gehin. The type of jokes that I tell are vulgar, and I get told this a lot. The only reason I ever learned this word is because I got told gehin dane a lot, gehin, right? So I say like maybe a perverted joke. I say something. Uh, Pervert. Let's just go with that. Perverted joke. Uh, you're, that is very gehin. Um, I don't think it's rude as much as it is vulgar. Okay. All right. Now, um, what am I doing here? Oh, this is very important. So, when you go down the stairs, okay, we you would think it would be sagaru, right? Like kaidan o sagarimashita. But it isn't. It's actually 
Oriru. Oriru. Oriru means to go down. It means to come down. Now, there's another kanji. I don't have it for Oriru. There's two ways to write Oriru, and the meaning changes. Okay? This is to physically come down off of something. Uh, and Oriru, the other one, is more like to come off of your position. Okay? So don't... You don't have to remember that right now, but just remember that Oriru does mean to come down. Like, I could... Let, let's say that I... Let's say that I <clears throat> strongly believe in something and someone's trying to convince me the other way or I made a, uh, what was I going with? Um, I'm not going to come down off of my position. Zetai orinai. I'm definitely not going to back down. It's it's more back down. That oriru. This oriru is not. This is literally to go down. All right. Next one. Hidari. Hidari. Now, luckily, I mean, we had two kanji with a bunch of readings. There's only two readings for this. It's very nice. Just like Migi only had Migi and U. Oh, no, I think it had another one too. What do we have for Migi? I there was another one. Give me, give me a second. Oh, we didn't do Migi yet. I'm sorry. I, I, oops, I jumped ahead. We'll get there in a second. We'll get there in a second. I, ignore what I just did. Uh, so Hidari, you know that Migi is coming up. Hidari means left, and so does Sa. It is five strokes. Does that... Does this look like left to you. I mean, do you look at that and think left? I don't. I don't know how that means left in any sense of the, is that an anvil? Uh, what is that a banana with a spear through it? I don't know what it is. Is that a T on an I? Treasure Island? I don't know what that is. I don't know how that becomes left. I don't know what that is. Maybe, you know, that coming down somehow is left. But I mean, even this stroke goes to the right. So this is where even very early on, less than 50 kanji in, and mnemonics are, maybe you've got to already start stretching. I'll give you a mnemonic to remember which one is right and which one is left, but I don't know if I can make you remember that that's left. I don't know how I can do it. Unless maybe you, I'm sure that some book has done this and that looks like an L, but that's to me not a good mnemonic, but maybe if it works for you. But the problem is, Miki has that exact same L in it if you're gonna use that. All right. Or maybe this L, right? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's all personal. All right. Five strokes. Let's look at some words. Uh, hidari ue. This is literally two kanji that we learned in this lesson. Hidari and ue. Now, even though it's in the order of left up, it means upper left in English. So hidari ue. Okay. Sasetsu. Sasetsu means left turn. Sasetsu. Okay. Now, this setsu kanji... We don't know it yet, but it means to bend. You're bending to the left. Sasetsu. It doesn't mean bend, but it means left turn. All right? Hidari gawa. Hidari gawa. Left side. Oh. Hidari gawa ga itai desu. Um, chotto jiko ni attan desu kedo. Oh, I had an accident. Hidari gawa ga chotto itai desu. Tabun, aza ga dekite ru. I probably have a bruise. Hidari gawa ga sukoku itai desu. All right? And this is very, very easy to get, but I just wanted to use the kanji that we already know in this lesson. Hidari sta, bottom left. And once you know that, that the, we already know how to use, if you've been through any of the Japanese material books, we talk about it in book two. In book two, we talk about locations, and you would put the location marker after it. And I could say, it's on the upper left. Hidari ue ni arimasu. It's on the bottom left. Hidari shita ni arimasu. It's just a location that we can use. Just like you would say, ue ni arimasu. There's no difference. It's just you're being a little bit more specific on what ue it is, okay? All right, here we go. This is what I'm looking at. Now, look at this. It's not that different from left, right? It's not. Now, look at the stroke order. Look at that. Do you see that? Over and then down, right? First stroke is this one. Remember that. First stroke is this one. What the, what the heck? Why would you make it different? I don't know, but it's different. The stroke order is wrong. And if you're in a class where the teacher cares about stroke order, you're gonna get it wrong. And if you're taking a kanji test, they will. This is the one thing they'll try to ask: which one is stroke number two? And they're gonna see if you remember the stroke order. You've got to know it if you're gonna pass. JLPT, uh, not JLPT, uh, the kanji kente, the kanji noryoku, I know what's it called, yes, kanji kente, the kanji proficiency test, they'll make sure that you know the stroke order. You could fail that section if you don't know this, 
right? So we've got that similar part, but different stroke order, and then mouth. How is that right? How is that right and the eye thing is left? Mnemonics, all kanji, all kanji are mnemonics. They're, they're, all kanji have been made from pictures. We're not even 15 and we've already broken this rule, right? All right, it can be read migi, it can be read uh, u or u. Yeah, there was, I knew there was two readings, u or u, u or u. All right, uh, okay, five, exactly, same exact amount of strokes. Let's look, let's look at some words. Uh, before I even get there, let's look at people watching the stream. How would I say upper right? Upper right, I'll wait. Jay's Mackey, I like where you're going with your mnemonics. I'm actually getting ready to do that. You might have saw it in my book or it's just very logical that it works the same way that you did it. All right. Uh, who wants to tell me how to say, great, condemn untruth. It is migi ue, migi ue. All right. How would you say, now, sasetsu is left turn. How would you say right turn? Wait, why are you all saying hidari way? Did I say upper left? Oh, you guys are saying migi way. I'm sorry. Someone in Romaji said hidari way and I got confused. How do you say? No. Oh, very close. Okay, condemn you. That is the wrong kanji, but it's the right reading. It's not yusetsu. Ah, first one to get it was water sees water. It's usetsu. Usetsu. Not yusetsu. Not yusetsu. All right. All right. Migi kiki. Migi kiki. I should have asked you. That's right handed. Migi kiki. Oh, migi kiki desu ka? Are you right handed? No, I'm left handed. How do you say left handed? This is what I talk about the snowball effect, right? Once you know one thing, you can extrapolate the other thing. You definitely get faster at learning. Even though you think you hit a plateau, you're probably just not looking at new lessons. If you're looking at new lessons, you won't hit a plateau. What happens is you stopped looking at new lessons. That's why you're here to plateau. Uh, who said it? I just saw it. Person with a bunch of kanji in your name, yes. Person with flow and something and bunch of kanji in your name, you got it. It's hidari kiki for left handed. All right, and then right handed is, uh, right hand is migite. Now, migite does not mean right-handed it literally means right hand okay that's the difference migi kiki is right-handed migi te right hand all right now now is we're going to talk a little bit about kanji how they are pictographs right and they're easy to make into a mnemonic right you can a, a, or they're, they're easy to remember because uh, a mnemonic is a little story to remember something so i think i've been using it wrong it's not mnemonic, i mean pictograph what i'm saying uh, that the kanji can all, are all form forming uh, something that you can visually look at and understand it. So this is directly from the book. I just cut it out of the book. So we have sun or day, and it it looks like a simple sun. You know, I don't, I don't know how the sun is square with a line in it, but yeah, I could see it. A lot of books will show you the history of how it came from the sun, and I hate that they do that because it really only works for a very small select. The other stuff that they show you, it's a, it's such a stretch. It's a very big stretch. Then you've got me, which is a sun with another line for some reason. This one I feel works better because it looks like an eye that's vertical, right? The eye is, you know, you could literally draw eyes like that and it would make sense because this is like the pupil of the eye, right? A tree looks like a tree. It definitely looks like a tree to me. And uh, yeah, I guess we could say that this looks like a mouth, mouth, but you wouldn't, I wouldn't think you're dumb if you thought that this kanji meant box. You know, maybe you forgot that it was mouth, but if you said, oh, that means um, square. That kanji means square or it means box. The thing is, it doesn't. It doesn't mean box and it doesn't mean square. It means mouth or opening, opening, okay? All right, now, some kanji are not easily viewed as a pictograph without historical context. What is this? It means departure, but doesn't it just look like an 8-bit race car? Because the people 
back thousands of years ago when these characters were invented, maybe to them, it had some historical meaning, like a mountain stacked on a mountain, or there was probably some meaning to it, but to us, it just looks like an old video game, 8-bit race car, maybe. And what's this, a tent or a wishbone? And furthermore, that's just people flipped to say enter. What is that? It looks like a wishbone to me, right? I wish I could enter this bone. I mean, I, I don't know what to do with that. And for what, what about right and left? I mean, left and right. What's this, an anvil or a mouth? Now, there are, there are good mnemonics for, for these, by the way. And you guys brought them up, and excellent. Uh, I actually have one in the book that we'll show you in a second. Uh, but yeah, it's like lean over a mouth and lean over an anvil. You know, the way that I remember these, we'll talk about them, but you, you use what you already know in Japanese. You double up on your Japanese. You don't use English or that kind of simple logic. You use Japanese to remember. And here we go. Four has five strokes and five has four strokes. How does that help? You know, you could remember, oh, that's the one with five strokes, so it's five? No. Oh. And how does that look like a four? I mean, maybe that's a rectangle. And how is that five with four strokes? Although, strangely enough, this looks like it has more strokes. But this stroke is counted as one because it, it's continual. All right? Now, now we're going to talk about the first kanji that we learned. I'm going to show you. We're going to talk about um, how some kanji do definitely make sense as a story. So we've got a person. This is, I didn't invent this. This is, everyone knows this. Even Japanese children are taught this. Person, tree. Person leaning up against a tree to rest is to rest. Yasumi, right? Yasumi, we just learned it, right? Person leaning up against a tree makes the kanji that means rest. This is a great mnemonic, okay? It's easily understood, it's universal. That's an excellent mnemonic. That's when mnemonics really, really pay off. Now, I told you, I promised I was gonna tell you what this is. This is, this radical is called nin bang. Nin, if you remember, is one of the readings of hito. I, I think we, we might not have learned this yet, but this is nin bang. Hito means person, that's the, Chi the Japanese reading. And nin is the Chinese reading. And also jin is another reading, but this is nin bang. Uh, the radicals have names like bang, depending on their positioning. Bens typically are on like the left side. Then you've got um, kanburis, which are like their crowns on top of the kanji, like take kanburi, which is the bamboo crown radical, right? Or bamboo radical. You've got, um, what is it? Is it, is it hana kanburi? I think it's, fl no, kusa kanburi, I'm sorry. Kusa kanburi, which means the grass one, that's, that's the one that goes two lines and a line right through it. That's kusa kanburi. Don't remember that right now, I'm just saying, because it's on top, it's called kanburi, okay? And then th th there's three or four different patterns for what you call them, okay? All right, so that's that. And then this is just ki, all right? And I believe this by itself could be its own radical. I think it's just ki han, ki han, tree radical. And it's going to be on the left side, all right? What do we got next? Okay, let's just look at this. It's kind of a fun thing. Uh, I love jukugo <clears throat> when they help you learn. This is what I talk about, you know, learning new words with the kanji are really more important than learning the readings. Uh, knowing the readings is nice, but it, it's much better if you know what words are used in. So I like these words that are used where they've taken the opposites. Jōge, up and down, will remind you which kanji is what, and you'll learn two of the readings together. Jōge, up and down, okay? And sayu. And I'll tell you, that's one of the only words I know that, that I can come off of the top of my head that uses the U reading. Sayu, look right and left, or left and right, right? Sayu o chanto mitte kudasai. Michi wo wataru mai ni sayu wo mitte kudasai, right? Uh, when, before crossing the street, look left and right. You might tell your child to do that, okay? So let's look at, oh, oh, I didn't put it up. All right, I, I, I thought I had it, but I, I guess uh, it didn't make it to the PowerPoint. But if you look at these, this is a katakana e, okay? Now that's not in the book. I saw someone write it and I remembered that that was a good version. So it's e, like le, left. But that's not what I did to remember it. I, I know that this is not this box here, which is a ro in katakana. I remember that it's a ro in katakana, okay? So uh, it starts with an R, so it's right. And the one that doesn't have row is left. That's how I remembered it. I sometimes use opposites to remember like that. Okay. Now, I'll give you another hint for stroke order. Down right, leftovers. 
downright leftovers. If you can remember that phrase, you remember that it's down on the right one and left over on the left. Okay, a little bit of a bonus thing. It's in the book, but I didn't put it in the PowerPoint. All right, if you would like to purchase Conjure from Zero, you can get it on Amazon. If you don't have Amazon in your country, you can use Book Depository. And we do have a distributor that uh, if you're a store in the UK or somewhere in Europe, Bay Books can supply it to you. And actually, they have pretty decent prices. And I believe shipping is free from Bay Books. I might be wrong. Don't quote me. Thank you for watching. Chat from Zero. I'll see you all next time. Keep learning. Oh. <sighs>